Hey everybody, just a quick intro on this one. Today's image is somewhat similar to the one I covered in episode one in terms of the conditions I encountered. It was actually taken the same morning, but this particular one did have some unique challenges that I had to overcome as I started processing it. I wanted to delve into those a little bit, again, not from a super fine detail standpoint. I don't want this to be specific to all of the unique settings and slider adjustments and everything, so you can apply this regardless of the software tool you use for your processing. But I did think it'd be worth showing how I addressed those challenges in today's Today's episode. So with that, let's just jump right on in. All right, so we're basically looking at the raw file here. I did boost the exposure up on this one because the actual raw is a little bit dark, but anyways. Uh, so here, yeah, this is a really chaotic scene and typically probably something I would have just kept walking by, but the structure of this tree once again really stood out to me on this foggy morning. Just really interesting, complex branch structure. And this one in particular kind of just going all over the place and you've got all the rusty leaves here just a lot of crazy chaotic detail but uh, again that's what really drew me into this particular one you even got you know another trunk kind of coming off here and up here so it's just all over the place but you still have this fairly structured setup here in terms of the core structure of the tree and i did like the grasses here a little bit but there's a little too much in terms of this frame so as i was coming in here to process this one you know, and i already known that i've got some distractions that i would need to address there's this little out of focus distraction down in the very bottom right corner here you've got this blade of grass coming in that's out of focus as well it was closer to the camera than the rest of it and even things like you've got this yellowish green little strip of leaves up here it looks like a vine that was growing through and continuing on down into here you know, those are all things that when you look at the main focal point of this frame, they're a little bit out of place. So what I wanted to do in terms of post-processing this was really look at how I'm cropping it. Now I did like the structure up here in terms of this bit of branch coming in from another tree. So I didn't necessarily want to cut that out, but I did want to do a fairly significant crop on this one, leaving it in a two, three ratio, but really where I wanted to draw the line, so to speak, was kind of cutting out those distractions that I noted earlier. So that blade of grass, the unfocused part down here. And then I did want to make sure I didn't have too much of this foreground grass in the frame as well. A, it's not quite in focus, but also there's just, again, more noise and clutter down here and what's already a chaotic frame. So really looking at probably putting my crop right in this general area so that again, this main tree is gonna be the focal point of the frame, but still having some interest of these foreground grasses as well as the spindly skeletal branches coming into the upper right corner there. So that was the main target that I had here. Let me back out of the inking mode here and we can look at what I ended up with in terms of the crop. So going over to the crop and the first basic adjustments, you can see again, I've removed that distraction of that out of focus item down the bottom right as well as cutting back greatly on the amount of the foreground grass that's in the frame and then cutting off some of those distractions even though i like these branches up here i didn't want to incorporate too much of that other tree as it would be shifting this main focal point further and further to the left half of the frame or left really third of the frame and i wanted to make sure that it was the dominant structure within this image so if we jump back over to lightroom where i do my processing real quickly again this is the kind of initial starting point i had so if i go into the basic panel i boosted the exposure quite a bit balanced out the overall kind of contrast in the image, flattening it down a little bit so I could focus more on the localized contrast that I wanted to bring in. And then as I do on so many of my woodland images, I did a little bit of negative clarity on this. And then I actually brought the dehaze down quite a bit to kind of emphasize the fact that this was a fairly foggy morning and there was some pretty good atmosphere in here. And then if I actually jump over to this next frame I have here, the other thing I did was clean up some of the distractions in the scene. So there's this blade of grass kind of darting in from left center of the bottom edge of the image so I wanted to make sure I got that out of the frame so if I come up to my spot healing and enable that you can see I removed that little distraction from that bottom edge of the frame and then there was just a little bit of a uh, little bit of a brighter clump of grass down here that I adjusted as well and got out of there but nothing too major in terms of the spot cleanup that I had to perform on this particular image now if we continue to walk through the main building blocks of this particular edit and go into the tone curve this is where I use the more refined controls that you have with the tone curve to start bringing some contrast back in and what I really wanted to focus with on the tone curve adjustment here is trying to pull this tree out of the background a little bit more and again this is a very chaotic scene there's a lot going on you know if this is 
is going to be the star of the frame, how can I pull that out? So as I enable the tone curve here, I really focused on trying to darken up the background of the image a little bit so that the branch structure, the main trunk structure really started to pull out somewhat. You can see it also, I think it helps pull out the, even the finer branches going up into where the leaves are still in the tree. So if I disable this, you can kind of see those jump out just a little bit more. And again, trying to darken down the background subjects. Now you also notice by adding in some contrast with this tone curve, it also made a fairly big difference in terms of the saturation of the image. So going forward from here, I really had to make sure I focused on getting the saturation and the colors right now that I had the contrast baseline kind of where I wanted it. And again, if you watch the color differences, you know, the oranges really get boosted. There's a lot of purple and blues kind of being pulled back into the image. The greens on this vine really stand out a lot more. And then I really feel that the grass is too overpowering right now in this foreground corner so I want to address that as I continue on through. So once I had the tone curve set then I start working with my colors so if I come into my color panel here right now I've got this turned off if I enable it it's not a drastic change here it's really working to boost the reds and oranges of the leaves a little bit and you can see what I've done here I've got this broken out by the specific colors not much going on with the reds but I did shift the orange hue a little bit more towards the red end of the spectrum as well as boosting the saturation in the luminance of those oranges. Yellows really kind of play into the grass and the leaves themselves as well, but nothing too drastic there. There is a saturation boost on that. And I mentioned I felt that the grass was a little bit too distracting, so I'll tackle that in a moment. But because it was part of the adjustment with those oranges, they're not a pure orange. It's a blend of orange and red and yellow. The yellow got impacted here as well. Boosted the saturation of the greens a little bit, not because of these leaves over here necessarily, but I'd liked the little hints of green in the far background, as well as you've got the lichen on the tree that has some kind of green and if you look over at the uh, sliders here again some aquas as well so I wanted to bring those out as I thought that was a little interesting detail for the image also and then on the blue and purple side of things I wanted to try to get that toned down a little bit as I mentioned when I made the tone curve adjustments the background really kind of got a heavy blue and purple cast to it so I brought the blue saturation down a bit as well as the purple saturation beyond hue saturation and luminance going into color grading I wanted to further focus on adjusting the shadows and midtones a little bit and actually cool them down, get them away from the purple end of the spectrum a little bit more towards kind of that cool blue for a background, cool morning, foggy morning kind of vibe. So if I enable this, you can see the image overall, I get a little bit better separation between the cool background and the warmth of the leaves and the grass. So again, turning this on and off. And all I did was come in here and add just a little bit of blues to the shadows, shifted my midtones just very slightly towards the blues as well. But then on my highlights, and it's a very low saturation on this particular adjustment, but just a little bit of an orangish red into the highlights to help those leaves stand out from the bluer tones of the mids and the shadows. So again, before, and after my color grading adjustments. And then from here, I go into trying to focus the eye onto specific areas of the scene, removing distractions and helping just pull everything together so that, again, this tree is the main focal point and there's nothing like these greenish yellow leaves on the vine pulling your eye away. You don't have this strong highlights and oranges of the, the foreground grass here pulling your eye away from what I really want my viewers to focus on, which is the tree. So that goes into my local adjustments. So starting out, if I look at my graduated filters, I've got two applied to this image and I actually need to zoom out to show both of them. So let me zoom this out just a touch. And right now it's disabled if I enable my graduated filters. You'll notice that it's a fairly subtle change, but I wanted to emphasize the glow of the early morning light that was filtering through the fog and mist up at the top here. So I've got a gradient well off the frame. If I click on this, it's a very large gradient. I wanted this to be very soft and subtle, but I did use it to emphasize that light coming from above. And then I've got another one down here to darken the bottom right corner a little bit to again, help focus the eye more towards the main structure of the scene, which is the tree. Moving over to the radial adjustments, currently have those disabled if I enable them. Again, a fairly subtle change here, but a couple things that I'm using the radial adjustments to help get the scene under control, so to speak, is really darkening down these grasses to keep them from pulling the eye away so much. I've got a radial adjustment applied down here with a color mask so that I'm really only impacting the yellows and oranges in the grass and it actually blends over. If I turn on the masking here, you can see it's also going over into some of the little scruffy shrubs down here that uh, had a pretty strong orange tone. So just pulling the saturation 
filtration down in that as well as pulling the luminance down to try to keep the eye from going there immediately upon viewing the image. And then in addition to kind of de-emphasizing the, the foreground grasses here, I've also got a couple offset vignettes. I've got this one here, which is a huge radial. So if I zoom out further, you can see just how big that radial adjustment is. And this is just giving a little bit of an offset vignette, again, further darkening down this kind of right edge and bottom corner to help force the eye to the structure of the tree. And then this one here is a little bit smaller, but it's also intended to darken down the other areas of the frame beyond the tree. And I have a little bit of a negative saturation on here as well. And I mentioned that in episode one, where I'll often use a little bit of negative saturation or reducing the saturation on a vignette like this to just help again draw the eye to where I want the viewer to go. Now if we go to the local adjustment brush and the adjustments I made here again it's subtle differences but the main things to notice here is I had a couple challenging areas in this image that I had to work a little bit harder than I usually would to overcome. So the first again were these bright green kind of yellowish leaves on the vine on the right edge here. I didn't want to crop those out because I didn't want to get too close into chopping off the tree and the, the orange leaves. I also didn't want to kind out too much of the foreground grass. And then the other area I really struggled with a little bit on this one was these very bright or very intense red twigs down here. I didn't notice these when I was in the field shooting them because the scene was so chaotic and it was still pretty early in the morning so the light was definitely not great. But you know these really stand out and I wanted to de-emphasize those as much as possible. So between using some color range masking and local adjustments just with the brush tool I was able to de-emphasize those two areas. So if you watch the vines on the right and then these reddish pinkish twigs on the left here you'll see both of those get de-emphasized. Also some pink tones were starting to come in on these branches down the very lower left as well, which I just didn't feel fit the overall color toning of the image. So I wanted to address those as well. So as I turn this on, you can kind of watch those different areas. Turn on and off, on and off. So basically what I did here is I have a brush adjustment on just these leaves here where I used color masking to just target in on the greenish yellows of those leaves and I just shifted the hue over on them so that they kind of blended in with the rest of the oak leaves in here. And then I've got some adjustment brushes down here specifically on these branches I had mentioned kind of were trending towards some pinkish tones. You can see that pink is gone. Again if I turn this off you can see there's some pinks and some pretty heavy blues down here so I wanted to de-emphasize that. And then once again on the grasses down here. If I turn the brush adjustments on and off, you can see I made some minor adjustments there. A couple things actually I wanted to focus on using a local adjustment brush to kind of pull down the highlights a little bit and keep that eye more focused on this tree structure here. And then with this brush here, I actually just did, uh, just brought the blacks up a little bit to reduce the contrast. Again, the eye kind of gets drawn to the contrast. I want the contrast to be in this tree structure here. So just brought the blacks up just a little bit to pull that contrast out a little bit of this right third the frame. And then from here, the only other thing I did was apply a very slight global vignette. I think I mentioned in episode one, even when I do those offset vignettes with the radial adjustments, oftentimes I'll still come in here and just do a very, very subtle global vignette to help keep the eye from drifting outside the frame as somebody is viewing the image. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you can continue to follow along. And until next time, take care.